Good morning, Discovery Church. Please stand and join us as we begin our praise and worship. church. I am especially thankful this morning that Margie and Fred were able to get back yesterday because all I could think on the way here was we may be singing a cappella. <laughs> but Fred, we would have still done it. We would have done it, even, even a cappella. Um, we do have some announcements this morning. We have lots of cool things going on. Um, I'm really excited about Water for Tanzania. Um, at Vacation Bible School, the offering for that was around $80. And that's a little bit more than five people having clean water to drink. So um, we're continuing that through August. Um, so do um, drop your funds in the collection plate or in the blue bucket that's in the um, lobby. We're also showering our preschool, and they have been kind enough. Uh, Emily made us a list. And there's a QR code on the paper. If you just want to scan it, it takes you right to the Amazon wish list to help them get all the things that they need to have in order to start the year successfully. So um, if you need one of these, they're on the back table, or you can see Nina either way, um, and we'll take care of that. But it's all the things you would expect and a few things you might not. So do check that out. Are there any other announcements? Some of the things that went on this week, I was gone, so I don't really know, but I did see lots of pictures of things. They're painting the nursery, mm -hmm. and they're painting some of the classrooms. Preschool has been painting and cleaning. Mm -hmm. There's a giant pile of garbage out there. Um, <laughs> Bob Overly and his grandson took down the sign out front, if anybody noticed that. Um, and I'm pretty sure he cleaned all the equipment that's uh, on the playground. I said, it's going to rain for four days, so just spray some cleaner on there. and Yeah. <laughs> Let God Mother Nature take care of that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 
Yeah, so there was lots and lots that happened this week. That's exciting. That's really exciting. Are there any other announcements? There's one more up there. Is today's Emily's last Sunday. <laughs> Stand up, Emily. Come on now. <laughs> She's been running that back there for ever, right? Yes. <laughs> it is our pleasure to make that happen. <laughs> so that leads me to my next announcement. I will not be here next Sunday because she actually moves into her dorm next Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. Um, so whoever's doing the live stream, I won't be watching it live, but I will watch it later. Um, so do, do keep us in your prayers for this week. Um, I'm not going to cry now. I'm going to save that for later. You're Are there any all the way home, right? Yes, exactly. Now Molly gets to see what happened when we dropped her off. <laughs> Anybody else have an announcement we need to share? Let's pass the peace of Christ. as we continue with our praise and worship this morning.
do me I will trust with all my heart you are good you always are morning by morning great is your faithfulness to me please be seated it's time once again for the prayers of the people and we like to begin that time with praises to God for all the things that we've seen him at work doing this week in us and through us. And I love it. Lynn's hands already up. Let's get right to it. Yes, ma'am. Me too. Praise God. Praise God. All cylinders firing again. Lynn's brother had brain surgery, um, and he is recovering well. May have to have some uh, chemo. Definitely going to have some radiation to make sure that everything is taken care of. But God is so, so good. And we thank him for getting you there and back safe, too. Who else has a praise to lift up? Jen, you want to come up? Or, or, okay. So I don't have to yell. There we go. Last weekend, Nancy and I went out for my brother's memorial in California. And uh, my brother was a musician. He played piano, or piano, he played guitar and sang almost all his life. And he always provided the music. And so when it came time for the planners to plan the memorial, they said, what about music? And I said, I can sing a little, and I can play a little, but I can't do both. So don't count on me. But I will speak, so I did. But it bothered me, because he's, he was always the one that provided the music. So I said, maybe I can do something. So I concocted this idea, <laughs> this idea that if I could get the congregation to help me, keep the beat, and we did something simple, maybe we could do a song for Tom. So I came up with a song, Soon and Very Soon, you probably all know it, and I said, you know, if we just keep the beat, you know, kind of a thing. So as I said, introduced the idea to the audience, I hear this shuffling behind me. There's two Lutheran ministers sitting back there. Next thing I know, I get a hymnal open to the page of the song. And I'm going, wow, it's pretty cool. So then I get to the part where we've we got to keep the beat, you know, because I don't have a guitar. Next thing I know, on the other side of the stage, the piano player starts playing, playing the song. <laughs> Unbelievable. So anyway, I'm just emotional, naturally. Um, I taught high school for 10 years, so I'm not afraid to speak in front of people. <laughs> if, you, if you can't speak in front of people, you'll get killed in high school. But the emotion is, is tough. So anyway, I just want to share a praise about how God is in control. Just let him do it. Amen. Amen. And Jim, I kept my promise. I told you if you had tears, I would have tears with you. 
Who else has a praise they'd like to share? All right, let's move to prayer. Who needs prayer this week? All right. We will lift up the unspoken prayers. Uh Uh-huh. Yes. We do praise God that Hurricane Tropical Storm, Tropical Depression, Debbie, came and rained a lot, but not a lot of wind, and mercifully did not do us harm. Who else? Yes. Okay. Amen. Um, so, praise that Jennifer got home safely. Prayer because she got COVID. <laughs> and um, continuing to pray for all of our returning college students, our teachers who are returning, our administrators who are returning. Um, there's quite a few people going back to school now. Yes, sir.
Yeah. Thank you, Royal. We will lift up Stephanie and Bryson and their family, and we just praise God that you were there. You were there. Have you noticed what a magnet you are for people in need? <laughs> that can't have escaped your notice. Amen. Thank you for sharing that with us. Yes. Oh no, they're they have got it. Ugh. It's back, it's back. I know they are just desperate to get out to Colorado and see that baby. All right. Are there any others? Anybody else? Yeah. Okay. Just for recovery or long term? We will pray for Michael. Who else had a prayer? Uh -huh. <laughs> She'll get it. She'll get it. We'll pray for strength and for peace. Who else? Are there other prayer needs? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we come to you this morning with our hearts filled to overflowing, with joy to be in your house, Lord, with joy to be together with people who love you, with joy at all of the astonishing things that you have done this week right in front of us. Lord, we thank you for including us when you do your amazing works. We thank you, Lord, that you let us be a part of it. Even though you don't need us, we thank you, Father, for including us. We have so many things to praise you for, Lord. For Lynn's brother, who's recovering well after surgery, uh, we pray for his radiation and potential chemo to finish the job that they started with surgery, Lord. And we thank you for revealing that cancer when you did so that it could be taken care of. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you're doing for him and for his wife. And thank you for getting Lynn back to us safely. Lord, we thank you for the beautiful thing that you did for Jim at his brother Tom's memorial with the music. Soon and very soon, we're going to see the king. Tom's already seen the king. And thank you for the way that you supported Jim and helped him and made him know that he was doing exactly what you wanted him to do. And thank you for giving him the opportunity to share it with us. Lord, we thank you that Hurricane Debbie came through and didn't do damage. We got a lot of rain. We did some, have some tornadoes in the area, Lord. We thank you for preserving life and for keeping us safe. Lord, we thank you that Jennifer got home safely from Boston and we lift up her healing from COVID. Father, we thank you for putting Royal in the right place at the right time all the time. We thank you, Lord, for his obedience to your call even when he doesn't know what's going to happen he still goes where you tell him to go and does what you tell him to do thank you for the example he is for us for the inspiration he gives us with sharing the story and lord we want to lift up 
Stephanie and Bryson and their family this morning. We pray, Father, that a job will be found that can support the family. We pray for wisdom for both her and for um, the baby's father. And we just lift them up to you, Lord. Lord, there are so many who need prayer. First, for the unspoken prayers, Lord, you know what the needs are before we even know. And we thank you that you always hear us when we pray. Lord, for all of our college students who are headed back to school or headed to school for the first time, for our teachers and administrators who are going back this week, we thank you for them and we lift them up to you. We pray for a safe year. We pray for a protected year. We pray for a good, healthy year. And we thank you, Lord, for school. Lord, we thank you for all the travel mercies that you've shown to everyone who's been on their way home this week. Thanks for bringing Margie and Fred back to us. And Father, we pray that Janice and Ron will have a negative COVID test so they can go get on their airplane and go see their grandson. Lord, COVID is back with a vengeance. And we pray, Father, that you'll protect us and keep us safe. Lord, we lift up Sheila, Lynn's friend, and we ask you to give her strength and peace as she resolves those last issues with moving. And for Michael Hodges, Lord, we pray that during his time in rehab, he'll grow stronger, he'll feel better, and he'll be able to return to his usual activities. And we thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do for him. Father God, when Jesus was here and his disciples asked him how they should pray, this is the prayer that he shared with them, and we say it together now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Uh -huh. No, you're good. Yay. Well, we missed you. Today's children's message comes from John chapter 9, mostly verse 6. This is the story. Did I skip something? Yeah? Okay. This is the story of Jesus healing the blind man in kind of a weird way. Please hear verse 6 from the New Living Translation. Then he spit on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud over the blind man's eyes. He told him, go wash yourself in the pool of Siloam. Siloam means scent. So the man went and washed and came back see. So. When James walked in with this bowl of dirt, Don opened the door for him, and he said, I'm not going to ask. I'm not going to ask. They don't even ask anymore. Just like, yeah, okay, whatever. So um, when I was a little kid, I thought this was the weirdest story in the whole Bible. It's not. It's not even close. Um, read Ezekiel. But it is weird, right? This is the creator of the universe. He made the dirt, okay? He made the human whose saliva glands produced the saliva. He made the human whose eyes did not work. 
Um, why did he make mud to put on this man's eyes? Because we don't hear of this being done this way except here. It was the Sabbath. Jesus and the disciples came upon a man who had been blind from birth. And the disciples asked him a question. Who sinned to make this man blind? Was it his parents or was it him? And Jesus didn't like that question. And he basically said, he's blind so that you can see the glory of the Lord. Amen. When Jesus said that, would you not have stuck your eyes really hard on that guy? Something is about to happen. So then he bends down and he spits on the dirt. Patooey, I'm not really going to do it. If the kids were here, I was going to let them do it. And he makes mud and he smears it on the guy's eyes. The guy does not ask a question. There's not a question asked. Not, Lord, what in the world are you doing? Lord, what, how is this helping? None of that. He just stands there and lets him do it. And then Jesus says, okay, no, you're blind. Okay, no, I just covered up your eyeballs with mud. But find your way to the pool of Siloam and wash your face. Get the mud off. And so the guy goes. However it is that he had to make his way there. And it couldn't have been easy to be blind back then. Today we have all these cool tricks and helps for people who don't see. But back then you were just out of luck. Guy makes his way to the pool, washes his eyes, and comes back because he can see. He washes off the mud and he can see. It's a crazy miracle. The whole rest of his life, he tells people what happened. I met this man named Jesus. He spit on the ground. He put mud in my eyes. I washed it in the pool of Siloam, and now I can see. And I've never seen before. People, Pharisees were angry. People were astonished. The story spread. This is one of the stories that spread around Jerusalem and around the area that made people come when Jesus was speaking. Because they just knew something was going to happen. Somebody's going to see. Whether it's with their physical eyes or with their spiritual eyes. When we have trouble seeing spiritually, we need Jesus to spit on the ground and put mud on our eyes and wash in the pool of Siloam so that we can see too. Amen? Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for this crazy story. Thank you for sharing with us that the man was blind to reveal the glory of God. Help us to remember through today's sermon and after, that that is exactly what hope is about. It's in your precious and holy name that we pray, Lord, and all God's children say, Amen. Today's scripture comes from Psalms, and I don't preach on Psalms very often. Because it's hard to me. Um, and bear with me. This is Psalm 130 in the New Living Translation. From the depths of despair, O Lord, I call for your help. Hear my cry, O Lord. Pay attention to my prayer. Lord, if you kept record of our sins, who, O oh Lord, could ever survive? But you offer forgiveness that we might learn to fear you. I am counting on the Lord. Yes, I am counting on him. I have put my hope in his word. I long for the Lord more than centuries long for the dawn Yes, more than centuries long for the dawn. O oh, Israel, hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is unfailing love. His redemption overflows. He himself will redeem Israel from every kind of sin. This is the word of the Lord. Just for fun, I'm going to read it to you from the message. Um, 
the message is a translation that just sounds like we talk without y'all. I think they should add that. They haven't accepted that suggestion thus far, but that's what the message is. Here's what it says. Help, God, I've hit rock bottom. Master, hear my cry for help. Listen hard. Open your ears. Listen to my cries for mercy. If you, God, kept record of wrongdoings, who would stand a chance? As it turns out, forgiveness is your habit. And that's why you're worshipped. I pray to God my life of prayer and wait for what he'll say and do. My life's on the line before God, my Lord, waiting and watching till morning, waiting and watching till morning. O Israel, wait and watch for God. With God's arrival comes love. With God's arrival comes generous redemption. No doubt about it. He'll redeem Israel, buy back Israel from captivity to sin. Today we are talking about hope. And Royal, you have a big part in this sermon today. Every once in a while you remind me that not everybody lives in constant hope. And we're here to change that. All this week, as I've already hinted at, I have been thinking about Emily making her way into the wide world of Wilmington, thankfully less than two hours down the road. If you don't answer the phone, I will show up. And I've been thinking about all the things that we need. So we have shopped like maniacs. I was saying earlier, Amazon's been to our house 30 times in the last 30 days. Um, Our dog is starting to really like the Amazon truck. But in any case, as I was thinking through that, I've been thinking of things that I meant to tell her but haven't done. I got to tell you this. I got to tell you this. I got to tell you this. So randomly throughout the day and night, I just show up and I'm like, oh, and by the way, blah, 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 blah. She was like, okay, that was random, Mama, but thank you. Because I just need to pour it all in there so that I know I've done it, right? So as I was thinking about today's sermon and the thought that this will be her last one in the room with us for a while, I'm uh, I'm okay. But it's made me think about what I need to tell her before she goes. And I don't usually do this, but I'm going to do it today because I want to say this right. I'm going to read a lot of this instead of just telling it to you because I don't want to leave anything out. What is it that is most essential for Emily to remember when I'm not there to remind, nag her about it? Lots of things come to mind. Things about safety, lock your door. Things about healthy living, eat right, exercise, drink lots of water, sleep at night. Things about academics, study hard, don't procrastinate, plan ahead, collaborate with others. And things about life, be kind, use your thought filter, be helpful, think before you act or speak. Things about Christian life, find a church in Wilmington, find a place to volunteer. But somehow, these didn't cover everything in my heart. After a few days of soul searching, I finally figured out what I want to say. What I want you to know is that hope is absolutely essential to living the Christian life. The Bible tells us that we need faith, hope, and love to thrive as Christians. It emphasizes that the greatest of these is love, and it is. But hope is incredibly important, too. Today, I'll share with you three acronyms for hope. And if you have anything to do with public education, you know acronyms are like the bane of our existence. There's an acronym for everything. But these are important, so remember these. Hope. 
H O P E. Hold on, pain ends. The second one, hope. Have only positive expectations. The third one, hope. Heart open, please enter. Hopefully, these acronyms will help you remember to hope always. Hold on, pain ends. Let's begin where the psalmist begins, crying out to God from the depths. Our acronym is Hold On, Pain Ends. This psalm is a psalm of ascent. It's meant to be sung on the way up to Jerusalem when you're heading up for a Passover festival, a Feast of Tabernacles festival for holy days. It's meant to be sung as you climb because no matter where you come from, you go up to Jerusalem, a psalm of ascent. Imagine your entire group of travelers coming from wherever you're coming, all climbing at the same time, all singing this psalm together. Because don't forget, psalms are songs. They're meant to be sung. And the way that most people learned psalms was to sing them. And if you go to a service in a temple, or synagogue today, they're singing psalms. Actually, yesterday, they're singing psalms. So <clears throat> that's what they're meant to be. It begins with an acknowledgement that the singer has hit rock bottom. They are in deep, and only God can help. This recognition that God can help is the basis for all hope. There is a God in Israel, and his name is Yahweh, Adonai, Lord, and the Lord, and he is listening. The singer acknowledges that he can't save himself, he can't redeem himself, he can't forgive his own sins, he can't cleanse himself, he cannot pull himself up by his own bootstraps. He needs the help of Almighty God, creator of the universe. And so, in hope, he cries out to God from the depths. It could be the depths of depression or the depths of loneliness. It could be the depths of loss or the depths of sickness. It could be the depths of fear or the depths of addiction. It could be the depths of wickedness. We don't know. But we do know that he recognizes his plight and cries out to the Lord for help. In hope, in certain hope. It is not a wish he makes, and he's not blowing out birthday candles. This is hope. Hold on. Pain ends. His hope is firmly in God, and he knows his hopefulness will be met with God's faithfulness. When he cries out, he expects an answer, and he is fully prepared to wait as long as it takes to get one. God is faithful. His mercy never fails. When you find yourself in the depths, cry out to the Lord with hopeful expectation, and he will answer you. Don't be afraid to ask for help. God knows you. This request will not come as a surprise to him. And remember, hope. Hold on, pain ends. This too shall pass. Maybe not as soon as you'd like. Maybe not in the way you expected, but it will end and you'll be okay. Our second acronym for hope is have only positive expectations. In the New Testament, Paul is the person who talks about hope the most often. And for first century Christians, Hope was always a positive thing, something good that was expected to come or to happen. When Paul spoke about hope, he was talking about something much to be anticipated and looked forward to. One of the most tempting things about hope is that we tend to put our hopes in people. It's not really a fair thing to do. It's good to trust others and even to rely on others, but our hope should always be in something more lasting and more stable than any human. 
our hope is at its best when we rightly place it in the hands of God, because our hope is based on God's never-changing, always faithful, forgiving, merciful, and gracious nature. It can prosper and grow. God will never let you down. Hope for, pray for, ask for whatever you will in the Jesus' name and for his sake, and it will be granted to you. Hope in the hopeless. Hope in the forgotten. Hope in the left behind. Hope in the Father and in the Son, and it will always find fertile ground. Don't give up at the first sign that you'll meet resistance. Persist in hope. Persist in prayer. Persist in your pursuit of God and his kingdom. And just watch what he will do with you, for you, through you. Expect only good things. Look for the happy things. Thank and praise God for all his mercies and kindnesses. And watch what he does. The psalmist says he has put everything on the line. His whole life is on the line before God, and he waits and watches for God like a watchman waits for dawn. When watchmen walk the walls, they would look forward to and hope for the dawn when their shift would be over and they could go home and sit down and eat and get some rest. Dawn also meant that someone else would be coming to take on the worrying for the rest of the day. Wait for and hope for God just that way, looking forward to what he has to say to you and do for you and with you. You'll never be disappointed. Have only positive expectations. Discouraging moments come, but they are temporary. Psalm 30 verse 5 says, Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes with the morning. The sun comes up every day, everywhere. Let your joy rise in the morning with the sun, because your hope is in Jesus. Our final acronym for hope is heart open, please enter. Last week during the children's sermon, I showed you a balloon that was empty of air and a balloon full of air. The children said they'd rather play with the balloon that was full because it could do more things and it would be used for its intended purpose. In some ways, you're like a balloon filled with hope instead of air. You're meant for a purpose. God made you to be you. And in order to be the you you, you must be filled with faith, hope, and love. One of the best ways to be filled with hope is to share it with others. In every group of people, there are some people gifted with an extraordinary ability to hope no matter what. Because of those people, be one of those people. The world is a hard place. It beats up the best of us sometimes. We get a steady diet of bad news, unfortunate events, painful truth, and evildoers. But we continue to hope because our hope is not of this world. But rather, our hope came down from heaven to take on flesh and dwell among us. Our hope's name is Jesus. And our hope is alive because Jesus is alive. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. I am never alone. I have help. I have a Savior. I have a Redeemer. And the Bible, God's own word, tells us that he will save us to the uttermost, redeem us completely, help us in times of trouble, and shelter us from storms. Heart open. Please enter. When you accept Jesus as your Savior, you open your heart to him, and God cleanses you of all unrighteousness. Then, because he is God, he refuses to remember your sins. He makes an effort 
to recall them no more. When our heart is open to Jesus, sometimes that makes it a little easier for the world to hurt us. But there is no hurt that Jesus can't heal. No hurt he doesn't understand. No hurt from which you cannot recover. The hope you put in Jesus, because it comes from Jesus, will sustain you and push you forward when you think you can't take another step. Then it will carry you when you collapse. Lean on Jesus. Cry out from the depths. Trust and hope in God's faithfulness. Leave your heart open. Hold on, pain ends. Have only positive expectations. Heart open. Please enter. Admiral William H. McRae <clears throat> writes about what he learned during Navy SEAL training that has helped him and could help everyone live a better life. Hope. He said, Hope is the most powerful force in the universe. With hope, you can inspire nations to greatness. With hope, you can raise up the downtrodden. With hope, you can ease the painful loss. Sometimes all it takes is one person to make a difference. We will all find ourselves neck deep in mud someday. That is the time to sing loudly, to smile broadly, to lift up those around you and give them hope that tomorrow will be a better day. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to share your word from the Psalms. Thank you, Father, for all the amazing things that you do for us to inspire hope. Mostly, Lord, thank you for Jesus. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who has loved us and given us eternal comfort and good hope, by grace, comfort and strengthen your hearts in every good work and word. Amen. Would the ushers come forward? Let's bless the offering. Father God, thank you for all the gifts that you pour out on us. Help us to be generous in just that same way. In Jesus' name, amen. Please join us for our final song. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Over every heart and every mind Cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Your name is power Your name is healing Your name is life Break every stronghold Shine through the shadows Burn like a fire I 
just want to speak the name of Jesus over fear and all anxiety to every soul held captive by depression I speak Jesus your name is power your name is healing your name is life break every stronghold shine through the shadows burn like the fire your name is power your name is healing your name is life Break every stronghold and shine through the shadows. Burn like the fire. Shout Jesus from the mountain. Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family. I speak the holy name, Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountain, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like the fire. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like going to do something different. Emily, will you come up here, please? Would any of our teachers, administrators, other students come forward? Student teachers? It'll be all right. It won't be up there. Just say my Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. <laughs> I want to invite whoever would like to, to come and lay hands on them, and we're going to pray for them before we say our benediction. You're, you're, how about if y'all step right down here? That way people can get to you. I should have thought of that sooner. I'm sorry. Everybody got somebody? <laughs> All right. Father God, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for your precious word. Help us remember to hope, Lord, at all times. Let the world not take away our hope. Let it not take away our joy. Let our faith be built every day when we see the sun come up because we know that you're there and you love us and you're with us. Lord, we pray for a safe, protected year for all of these educators and students. We pray, Lord, that you'll keep them safe in and out of their buildings, up and down the road. We pray, Lord, that you'll keep them safe in their homes, on their way to and from. We pray, Lord, that you'll keep them safe from illness, that they'll be able to fulfill all their obligations. We pray, Lord, for your strength. We pray for your peace. We pray, Lord, for your inspiration. 
And we pray, Lord, for the endurance that comes from knowing that you're there. Thank you, Father, for all the opportunities that you give us, but especially those to educate and be educated. We love you, Jesus, and we thank you in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. And we'll say our benediction. If you want to just turn around right here, we can do it from here. However you want to do it. Nothing like a little chaos right at the end, right? You're welcome. Wherever you go, God is sending you. Wherever you are, God has put you there. He has a purpose in your being there. Christ who indwells you has something he wants to do through you where you are. Believe this and go in his grace and love and power. And all God's people say, amen. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows.